choose not only real locations, but the authentic locations where John Buchan had set his original story. I was delighted that we were actually in Dumfries. That, that pleased me enormously, that we didn't have to double for, uh, you know, for somewhere else and pretend it was Dumfriesshire. Um, and I think that, that the spirit of the way we did it and, and the, the, was very much in the buck and mold uh, along... I think he would have laughed. I think he would have enjoyed the humour in it because it, um, we tried to keep to the penny dreadful aspect of it, really, that it was not to be taken too seriously. But our story starts a long way from Buchan, Scotland, in London. Early in 1914, a coded cable was sent from a European power to a house in West London. It read, Let the sleepers awake. <gasps> our hero discovers a plot that will plunge Europe into war and is involved at the scene of several assassinations. What happens next is a bit complicated, but basically, Hanny ends up on the run from Prussian spies and the police. So what does every good British film hero do? He gets on a train. In the film, the train is surging towards Scotland, although in reality, it's steaming through the West Midlands. In the film, we see Richard Hanney leave St Pancras Station aboard a train for Dumfries. In fact, he's actually leaving a film set and coming here to the Severn Valley Railway. The line was a victim of Beeching's cuts in 1963, but is now the daddy of all heritage railways, manned by enthusiasts who maintain the charm of the pre-war period. This is the actual engine used in the film. Today it runs from Kidderminster here in Worcestershire, 16 miles up the line to Bridge North in Shropshire. Well, it's a long way to Scotland, so let's get going. In the film, the police board the train at Highley Station. They're after Hanny, who they believe is a murderer, wanted for a string of assassinations. He's trapped as the train steams towards Scotland and must make a dramatic escape. You know they had to grease the wheels to make them skid like that. This is the Victoria Bridge that crosses the River Severn between Bewdley and Arley in Worcestershire. In the film, Richard Hanney stops the train, jumps down and leaps over the railing where he hides under the bridge to evade the policeman. Colin Skeeping, I think, was my stunt double. Um, and he had to dangle underneath the bridge, which was quite a stunt, because the, 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 uh, the Seven was in spate at the time, being winter. So it was pretty deep and fast-flowing. But I had to do some of it as well um, for the close-up work. And I had to get underneath that bridge and dangle from a girder with... Uh, not for very long, but for long enough. And I had a safety thing underneath me, which you couldn't see. But the props guy said, he said, well, I'm, he said, I'm going to go down, he said, I'll go down the bank. He said, you know, we don't want any accidents. He said, I'll go down there 100 yards or so. And he said, I've I got this rope. He said, um, so, I'll, you know, because if he does go in, I'll throw it out. And somebody said, well, it won't reach. And he went, I know what I'll do. And he wrapped a brick round the end of it. <laughs> I thought, that is brilliant. He throws his rope out with a brick on it. The brick lands in the water and takes the rope to the bottom of the river. I said, I don't think that's going to save me. So I hung on for dear life, because I didn't think rescue was going to come from any other direction. This bridge was actually built in 1861. It was built in much the same way as the famous Iron Bridge in Colebrookdale, which was the very first Iron Bridge to be built in the world, although this is actually twice as long. It would have probably been floated up the river, and at the time, this was actually the greatest span in the world at 61 metres. In the film, it's a sort of greeny colour, 
but it's since been restored to its original pink. And suddenly we're in Scotland. In the original film, Richard Hanney is part Scotsman, and he decides that he needs to escape to the wildest place he can think of. So he comes here to the Nith Valley in Dumfries and Galloway. The film was shot in and around the Forest of A, north of Dumfries. This is real-life Buchan country. Today, much of it is owned by the Forestry Commission. Queensbury, hidden in the mist, is just over 2,000 feet high and is very popular with walkers. This is also part of the Covenanters Trail, which links memorials and gravestones of the 17th century Presbyterians who were murderously persecuted for not accepting the Stuart Kings as the head of the church. I never stopped running in that film, and running in hugely inappropriate uh, costume, running across the moors wearing a pair of boots and an overcoat and a hat and a scarf um, is not... It's not exactly marathon stuff, is it? 